Okay, um, we're going to talk about memories. Now, this wasn't mine, this was someone else's, but it's a Barbie. And it's a horse carriage, and it attaches to a Barbie car. Okay, so... Memories. So, if you get into a high vibrational state, then you access the source fields that are at the high vibration. And these are uh, what you normally consider to be lovely things, because the higher vibration you are, the more love there is. Joy, bliss, peace, happiness, fun. But if you get into a downward spiral that brings you into low vibrational states, let's go with hate, then what happens? Well, then you're not connecting to the higher vibrational source field. You're connecting to everything that has to do with hate in the source fields. So, if last week um, I had a big drop in my vibration and um, I dropped into a hate, everything that's in that hate field um, is still there. Even when I raise my vibration and I go into love and peace. And a week later, something happens, and I fall back down into the low vibration of hate. Now, for the past week, I haven't been thinking about hate. But as soon as I drop back into that field of hate, I remember everything. Oh, yeah, I remember now. A week ago, you were an asshole to me. You were being very dominant you were being a bully. You were spitting in my face. I forgot all about that. You know, I don't know where I was the past week. But I'm back now and I remember you were nasty and you're still nasty. So that's what happens. Uh, all of the memories that are attached to the source field of hate, you perceive them when your vibration drops into hate. And when you're out of that vibration, um, as long as you don't think about hate, you're not going to experience those things. But if you fall into hate, all those memories come rushing back. So it just shows you that uh, the source field of hateful objects uh, remains in the source. And it is you and your vibration that accesses that source field. Now, how do you get knocked into a hateful vibration? Maybe you turn on the television and um, there's a scary movie, the national news is on, and all of a sudden your attention goes to what the reporter is reporting. They say, you have an enemy. North Korea is testing nuclear missiles and they're aiming them at you. It's not a good idea to turn on the television, is it? Because you pretty much know that there's negative news every time you turn it on. And you know that uh, movies on Netflix are generally... They're not terribly uplifting. A lot of people find they're addictive and they binge watch them. But what are they really getting out of it? They're getting stuck in a particular vibration. And it's not a good vibration. It 
I mean, some movies are uplifting, but, you know, when I turn it on, there's a hell of a lot of movies that, me personally, I don't want to watch. When you're young and you've got a whole variety of different kind of movies to try it out, well, that's generally what you do. You try out different movies. And sometimes you watch a scary movie and it sort of sticks with you. I remember when I was young, I'd go to my friend's house and I remember one particular movie. It was called Phantasm. It was a horror movie. And the movie was over and I had to walk home and I wasn't really happy walking home. I kept thinking, you know, maybe there's phantasms in my reality. And to this day, I remember that movie and when I, I'd walk home. Other things that change your vibration. A lot of these things are social, you know, like you go to your friend's house to have fun. And then next thing you know, you're watching a movie or you're playing a video game for something to do. Someone says, oh, you know, where I live, you know, and the adults all drank booze. Oh, what did we do? Well, we found a way to get booze when we were young teenagers. And then what happens? Well, you play around. What's it like to have one drink of booze? What's it like to have 12 drinks of booze? It's an experience. Basically, everything is available on planet Earth for you to experience. And when you're young, that's what young people do. Uh, one idea that goes around and I hear from time to time is um, that you chart your lifetime before you incarnate as a human. You're in another dimension between lives, between human lives, and you plan out your whole life. And then once you've got it all the way you want it, you do whatever happens, maybe you walk through a portal, and then the next thing you know, uh, you're here on planet Earth as a child, and then you live your life, and all the things that you planned or charted out, all the experiences, all the people you're going to meet, they happen for you. And the evidence for this is if you ever have a precognition. In other words, uh, you have a dream about something or someone's name gets mentioned. And then in the next little while, uh, something from that dream or that person appears in your reality. So is everything in your human life pre-planned before you come to be incarnated as a human or is only some people say well the major events are pre-charted and then there's um, some wiggle room where some things might happen and some things might not happen some people talk about exit points in your life in other words um possibilities where you are going to die and you pre-planned some of these exit points uh, before you incarnated as a human in other words there is a possibility you might um, die when you're six from um, drowning Uh, and um, strangely, my parents said, before I could remember anything, I can't remember this, but they said that uh, there was um, one particular incident where they said that I was having trouble in a river. 
and I was very young. Creepy. But I didn't die in that exit point. In this reality, what made the decision to exit at age six or not? It's not really available to me in this particular reality, but when I finally leave this reality, maybe it'll never be available. No, it's not karma. It's simply, is it a randomness factor? No, it's something else. Some boss of me, some god that decides, yes, there are certain beings that are mm, uh, watching your life and they have a say as to what's going to happen. Are they like the Anchar? Corey Good uh, talks about extraterrestrials quite a bit. He said there's one group called the Anchar that claim that they're uh, humans but in the future and that they watch us on television. Is it the Anchar that have got a bunch of voting booths that decide what's going to happen to us? The answer is yes. How do you like that? Other people deciding what's going to happen in your life. Does it feel controlling? Does it feel like um, creepy? Does it feel like the Truman Show? Remember the Truman Show where Jim Carrey was um, not knowing that uh, he was in a controlled reality from the time he was born. If it's true, are you going to perform for your audience like you're uh, a wacko or an uh, intellectual or a sex maniac or a drunk? Or is it all pre-programmed? The answer is your free will is kind of hard to determine how much free will you have and how much uh, of your reality is controlled by the audience. Did you agree to this before you came down and became incarnated as a human? The answer is no, it's just the way it was. Is it always going to be like that? The answer is not so much. At some point in time, you will perhaps uh, disagree with the way that your life is being run by others and insist that they let go of control. And if they don't let go of control, then what are you going to do? But if they do let go of control, then uh, what kind of freedom do you want? Do you still want to be in a human body? Do you still want to be in conventional human reality? Do you want to be in a happy hunting ground? Uh, that's kind of an astral world where you can look it up. I mean, where do you want to experience? Do you want the existing people in your life to still be in your life? Or do you want to never see them again? Or do you want to pop in and out of one reality where you visit people for a while and then go someplace else. That's very difficult for you to say because you don't like limits. Other people very much like limits. They very much like to do the thing that they did yesterday. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and uh, Does your subscription to my videos make a difference? Yes. If you leave me a comment and ask me to do a talk about a certain thing or, you know, from this perspective and give me the perspective on something I've said, um, I'm probably amenable to trying to see what I can get for you. So I do like feedback. But if you're going to be a bitch, um, I might block you. Because I had a bitch the other day that I blocked. Be nice.